Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we honor and give special recognition to Chaplain Colonel Leslie Heyer of the California Air National Guard. Chaplain Heider is closing out a military career spanning 35 years, 8 months, and 19 days of dedicated service. And officiating today's ceremony is Major General Retired Mary J. Kite, former Adjutant General and Commander of the California National Guard. Please rise for the arrival of the official party. Wesley Clare, 
Wing Chaplain at the 144th Fighter Wing in Fresno, California, Reverend and Mrs. Pat Sheehan, Pastor of Westminster Presbyterian Church, Senior Master Sergeant, retired, and Mrs. Edward Carrillo, former non-commissioned officer in charge of the Chaplain's Office at the 144th Fighter Wing, Master Sergeant and Mrs. Douglas Ke Ke Kelly, former non-commissioned officer in charge of the Chaplain's Office at the 144th Fighter Wing, Master Sergeant Sergio Carrillo, non-commissioned officer in charge of the Chaplain's Office at the 144th Fighter Wing. And Chaplain Iger's family, wife, Patricia, father, Donald, son, Luke, and wife, Marla, daughter, Eliezer, Eliza, sorry, daughter, daughter, Abby Brontes, Chaplain Iger's daughter, her husband, Eliezer, children, Isaiah, Mariana, and Mateo, brother, Ronald and his wife, Anita. Christopher and Ann Cook, Chaplain Hyder's brother and sister-in-law. Tim and Dee Cook, Chaplain Hyder's brother and sister-in-law. And numerous nephews and nieces and great nephews and nieces. The Old Testament lesson will be read by Chaplain Captain Robert Rose, and the New Testament lesson will be read by Mr. Eliezer Barantes Alvarado. Chaplain? The Old Testament lesson comes from Joshua chapter 24. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your, your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord.
recruiter. <laughs> he is. He went out to the community with his team to find those leaders of various faith backgrounds. He qualified them, and then he later enlisted them into the California Air National Guard. They then would conduct the appropriate service for the various faith backgrounds, and they would also attend as required. Now, typically we say drill, but it's regularly scheduled training assemblies. When we come together for training, which keeps our state of readiness very high. So he was a relentless recruiter. He always served the wing, and he did get people into the military, and I see that hasn't stopped after meeting some of the uh, captains that had come on board, or are on board. Chaplin also, even though he was very active, he was a teacher. He made sure that senior leaders understood the importance and increased our awareness of various holy days from a vast array of religions and religious practices. And he always responded. Now, he's, he's doing this outside of what he would normally do, but I believe it is a part of life. But he would always respond to the many challenges and the crisis that the 144th was facing to include the loss of life. Now, I can say these things because I worked with him. I, you know, so in, not one year, not two years, but for many years. He consistently proved that he was approachable. His demeanor enabled personnel to offer resolutions. Now, it's easy, as we all know, to identify issues. But he was so approachable not, that not only were issues identified, but they also brought recommended solutions. And he respects differences. He mastered the art of sincerely treating individuals equally while recognizing the differences in culture. And then he would utilize those differences to address the needs of the airmen who are meeting the mission at the 144th Fighter Wing. He's an outstanding leader. He really is. He genuinely cares for the welfare of all people, the airmen, as well as the families. And that leadership is enhanced. He enhanced that with the ability to effectively communicate with subordinates, with all of his peers, as well as the senior command. Overall, Chaplain Les Hyder was consistent. And you know, you can't see my feet, so I'll stomp this. He was consistent. He consistently remained active, and he was visible. He was involved in the chaplaincy, the mission of the 144th Fighter Wing, and the welfare and health of everyone assigned. I'm not sure how you managed your time, but clearly he was extremely effective and the results were evident. There wasn't a weekend or a period of time when he was there on the base that you didn't see him spending time talking to people, moving from the wing headquarters and then down to the flight line. I also remember that uh, he worked very hard to encourage people to allow him access on the flight line. Uh, because you had to have a badge, and on that badge you were allowed to go, I see some heads nodding out there, you're allowed to go to certain areas, but he wasn't allowed to go out there on the flight line. But he was bound and determined. So he convinced, did you convince Chief Bretzer? See? <laughs> See? He wouldn't quit. And before you knew it, there he was out on the flight line under the airplanes, talking to people, as he normally would. I remember, for me personally, I lost a family member, and I can see this vividly. He may not remember, but I can see this. And he came to the office. He was in civilian clothes, so it was during the weekday. He offered his condolences, and he asked if there was anything that he could do. Now, for me personally, I've never forgotten that, that he would take the time to do that. Um, but there were also other times that he would just show up. Uh, when I was in maintenance, I had background aircraft maintenance, we were in the hangar where we placed the aircraft, 
and I was talking to my boss, who's a quite colorful person, and some of you may know Colonel Jimmy Benton, and, uh, and there were some senior, uh, enlisted senior NCOs that were also there in the discussion, and we may have been talking about bringing in an aircraft for scheduled maintenance. We may have been talking about that. But then the, the, the conversation progressed, or in some cases digressed, but it progressed. And my boss, Colonel Benton, he, he knew his people, so he knew all of my hot spots. And we start talking about some of those issues as a group. And so my jaw got tight. Then my jaw got a little bit more tighter. And then I thought, you know what? Very respectfully, let me tell you something. Very respectfully. And I began to unleash just a, just a little bit. And I remember looking up, and the hangar doors were open. I'm on the inside, so it's, it's, it's dark. But outside the hangar doors, it's sunny. So as I was beginning to unleash very respectfully, I looked up, and there was a chaplain. <laughs> Everything stopped. <laughs> Everything stopped. And before I knew it, it was like a cartoon. My boss and the NCOs were doubled over in laughter. They couldn't stop laughing. And that's because we knew the chaplain. We had respect for the chaplain and everything that he represents. But it also tells you he wasn't afraid to enter any environment. None. None whatsoever. And he was always welcome. So, Chaplain, it was good to watch you as you did travel up and down the wing and talk to people, extend your hand, and people stop and talk to you because you were genuine. And you continue to be genuine. I don't want to talk in the past tense, but I'm talking about the world that you're leaving now. Because you're going into another world. I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> uh, but before uh, you know, I leave this podium, I do want to spend a little bit of time, since he did not put a bio in the program, and just tell you that he started off as a chaplain candidate, you know, with more than 35 years, a chaplain candidate, uh, serving tours at Mather Air Force Base in California, and F.E. Warren in Wyoming. He went on to be a reserve chaplain in Onizuka. And some of you know Onizuka Air Force Station here in California, there were classified missions there. So he was ministering to the airmen and their families. He went on to, actually my first active duty base, he went on to Fairchild, still in the reserves, and ministered to alert crews there at the SAC base, and Strategic Air Command base. And while there, I don't know what was so special about the ministry at the Air Force of the Survival School, Tim, but he had a special ministry at the Survival School. And the only thing I can think of, although obviously I didn't attend Survival School, is that when the pilots and the dads were dumped in the water and left there until time to come pick them up, you must have been out there in a boat doing something, huh? <laughs> I don't know what you did. <laughs> Base in Texas, and he was a student ministry chaplain there at that time. Then he transferred to the Air National Guard and joined the 144th Fire Wing. He was there for 14 years. I can't believe it, 14 years. Uh, but this is for a person who said she was only going to be in four years. So, 14 years, and it goes by so fast. During that period of time, and before I came to Fresno, some of you may have been here at that time, but there was a Learjet that crashed here in Fresno. I see some heads nodding. Well, the chaplain was very active in providing shelter for all those affected families and helping during that period of time. And then when our country was attacked during September 11th, he was called to active duty and he stayed on active duty for four months. And that's where he was providing um, assistance to, uh, we actually have the alert mission here. Yeah, we, I'm still here, I'm still part of this land. Um, here at the 144th Fire Wing and any support elsewhere. He also went to Southern Watch in South America, to some remote sites in South America to minister there. And he was chosen to serve as command chaplain for a period of time 
at Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida. He didn't stop there. He was selected by the Guard Bureau to be the Air National Guard assistant to the United States Northern Command during Hurricane Katrina. And I'm, I'm not sure, Chaplain, how long you served there, but he gave aid uh, in terms of the uh, chaplain response. So that was extremely important. But while he was there, it wasn't as if he wasn't doing enough. He was then appointed from the Adjutant General at the time, the commander for the California National Guard, to be the Deputy State Chaplain of California. And that's where he integrated the other Air National Guard bases within our state together into one program. So he's, he's been a busy person over these more than 30 years. And Patricia, I have to tell you about his next assignment in 2006. I remember this too, because I thought, what is wrong with him? But he came <laughs> into the office and he, he told me he had an opportunity, 2006, an opportunity to go back to Guard Bureau. And as we all know, we grow up in the military and, you know, it gets tighter at the top on 10, so we either retire or we move on to other opportunities. And Patricia, he told me that uh, you and he were discussing whether or not to go back east and take a position back there. And what, six and a half years later, you're back here in Fresno. That was pretty special for me because he was, he was telling me about it. I thought, go. <laughs> it was really a great opportunity for him. And then he was appointed as a deputy director of the Air National Guard Chaplaincy Corps while you were back there. And that's where he managed the day-to-day -day operation of more than 600 chaplains and chaplain assistants worldwide. Now that's not a feat. I'm sure you've got some stories behind that. <laughs> and in 2008, he was selected to be the deputy director of the new, the Joint National Guard <laughs> Chaplain Office, which moved him into that joint arena. He also did some work with the chaplaincy, the chaplain's office at the Pentagon, under the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And I, I really wasn't even aware of that, but that's, it. that's quite the duty there. Again, under a joint environment. And then in 2009, he was uh, appointed, selected as appointed as the director of the Air National Guard Chaplain Corps, where he served for over three years. And he was in charge of all Air National Guard chaplains worldwide, and I'm sure the chaplain's assistants and all the other programs that you were in charge of. So you were extremely busy. Uh, there is so much more that I can say about Chaplain Hyder and his successes. And I am sure that many of you out there in the audience can do the same thing. But let me say at this point that I am convinced that no one person can do it all. And every service member needs support. And typically, that support comes from our families. So, Hyder family and the Cooks, thanks for your support all these years. Thanks for sharing this great airman with us. Thanks for making a difference by dedicating your support. And for the veterans in the Hyder and Cook family, thank you for paving the way for less and people like myself. We could not have done it without you. Families are special team members and together we all serve. Now, I know the captain is somewhere around here, Captain Wilson. All right, I'm going to change the program just a little bit. It's going to throw them off. It's going to throw them off. But I think you can hear me. And one of the things that we do in our culture, the military culture, is to recognize achievements by sharing our points. And one of the things I would like to do today is offer Chaplain Hyder my coin since I retired. Thank you so very much for your service. I'm proud to have known you.
my fellow airmen and longtime friend, may God bless you and your family as you continue down this road and journey into a brand new world called retirement. <laughs> You're going to love it. God bless you all and God bless America. Thank you very much. Title 10, Title 32, Joint Service Relations in 
ensuring training objectives and operational re requirements were met. In 2006, he was selected as Deputy Director of the National Guard Chaplain Corps. In 2008, he served as the Joint National Guard Deputy Chaplain, where he oversaw daily operations in support of domestic operations and ensured COCOM support through the Joint Chaplain's Office. In 2009, Colonel Hyder was appointed Director of Air National Guard Chaplain Corps. His accomplishments included development of innovative clinical pastoral education, spiritual resiliency, strong bonds, and formal mentoring. Colonel Hyder's accomplishments and selfless service to our state and nation reflect great credit upon himself, the California Air National Guard, and the state of California. Signed, Daniel S. Reddick, Colonel, California Air National Guard, Assistant Adjutant General, Air. General Kite will now present a certificate of accretion to Mrs. Patricia Cook.
Certificate of Appreciation from the United States Air Force. In grateful appreciation, the United States Air Force presents the Certificate of Recognition to Patricia C. Heider for the commitment and numerous contributions that made positive impact to the nation's defense. Thank you for the support which gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service. Given this second day of February of the year 2013, signed Chief of the Air Force Reserve, James F. Jackson, Lieutenant General, U.S. Air Force, and Chief of Staff, Mark A. Walsh, the third General, U.S. Air Force.
uh, she was the one that uh, could uh, set that new historical mark. And thank you, Mary, for your leadership and all that you've done. Uh, thank you to Irma Garrett, who's over here in her protocol team. I couldn't have done it without you, and she's done so much. Why don't you two stand up, and then we want to say thank you to her. Thank you to Westminster Presbyterian Church, and I wanted to have the ceremony here uh, because, especially now, having been the director, uh, I traveled to as many churches as I could to say thank you to you. It really is impossible to do an Air National Guard chaplain program without the support of the congregations, parishes like yours, Wes who sacrifice, who are willing to share their pastors. And so this is a, hopefully a small way for me to thank you to you for your 16 years that you supported me in this type of ministry. So thank you to you and, and you epitomize those churches uh, who see this as part of their mission and their outreach. Uh, thank you to the participants for West Clare, for Enyo, Scott Wilson, and I did say, you know, part of the goal when you retire is you have to re have your replacements in place. They're fully certified, Chaplain Wilson and Chaplain Rose, and they, they have their AFSC. And uh, that's great. And Sandy, I don't know if you're here, Sandy Brown, whether you yet, Sandy, I want you to know that Luke, on the civilian side, and Eliezer, you guys stand, are both, Luke's ordained, Eliezer will be soon, so I've replaced two for one on the <laughs> Thank you to my extended family, so I thought, anybody who's a cook or a hider, why don't you stand? That shows you they're supporting me. Mateo is coming. 
having the newest grandson. His middle name is Leslie, so Mateo's Leslie. And uh, Isaiah is Isaiah Eliezer after his other grandfather and father. So I'll let maybe Isaiah would like to hold this for this is a flag too for your family to remember us in service. And Eliezer, that's for you. He'll understand when he opens it. He's a big fan <laughs> of a certain basketball team. This <laughs> one's so for you, Isaiah. And that one's for you, Mari. Oh, okay. <laughs>
He went into the service in uh, April 24th, his birthday. He departed 1943, uh, and he was served on active duty till January 1946, and in the reserves till 1957, June of 1957. He flew a PT-22, a BT-15, a B-25, C-47, and C-53, all in those period of time. Battle campaigns in Normandy, Northern France, Ardennes, Rhineland, and Central Europe. Battle of the Bulls, Ridge Too Far, all of those. Yeah, campaign decorations, uh, he had the European African Eastern Campaign Medal, the Air Medal, American Campaign Medal, World War II Victory Medal. Uh, he went into countries where Labrador, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, England, and the list goes on. Then he said at the end, and many destinations were just uh, given to us as a number. Uh, they would just classify so he wouldn't tell us where we were flying, but <laughs> he flew in and dropped troops or supplies in uh, that area. So I thought, let's give Dad a big hand and thank you. Our fellowship 
and elevated our professionalism. Thank you for letting us be the recipients of his leadership, for letting us share his friendship, and for his self selfless service to his country, his dedication and an untiring devotion to duty, always with a list of things to do in his hands. And today, the Chaplain Corps of the Air National Guard around our nation and around the world is better off because your servant, Chaplain Hyder, led us for the past five years. Today he's no longer an active duty service member. May these days of closure and transition overflow with memories of his Air Force career and the deepest satisfaction of a job well done. We thank you also for his family, who never failed to support and love him even in the midst of the most difficult times. May you continually bless and hold Les and Patty in the palm of your hand. As new ventures unfold, guide their footsteps along the new and uncharted path before them, and provide them with a full measure of your care and keeping. Thank you for allowing us to cross our lives. We love them, Lord, and we thank you for them, and we rejoice with them today. Go with our friend and his family as new challenges and our face and new memories are created. Give them pleasant days as only you can provide. May they, assure, may, be, may they be assured of the greatest blessings of all. Well done, good and faithful servants. And now, may your blessings also rest upon all of us who are left behind to serve our nation, your nation, here on, on the homeland, and also for our friends and comrades who are still in harm's way. May we be steadfast in our love and life, and life our devotion to freedom, our intolerance of evil, our dedication to justice and the pursuit of peace. And we pray all this in your holy and precious name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Aguero. Please remain standing for the departure of the official party and the singing of the Air Force song. Please join us for a reception in the Calvin Room Fellowship Hall immediately following.